What's going on, Bully fam? It's your boy, the educator, the scientist, Mr. Double Muscle Line Bulls, um, bringing you another episode of Breeders Hacks. So, business models. Um, did you even know there was different business models when it comes to dog breeding? Well, I figured this would be a good topic to touch on since I got a little bit of a drive, so stay tuned. what's going on bully fam so essentially like what what a lot of people don't realize is there's different there's different business models in this dog breeding industry so what people don't realize is the business model that works for me may not work for you and the business model that works for you may not work for me or the business model that I have may work for you you know like there, there's so many different varieties and, and I've come to kind of notice and, and see these things over the time, over the years, things like that. Like, when it comes to the business model, maximizing your profits for your dogs, you know, getting the, the, the most that you can from your dogs. And, and, and here's a breakdown of some of the business models. Is like, some bloodlines, the puppies come out very like snipey in the beginning. So what happens is, people will often pass them up because of the fact that they're very snipey looking, very pit bull looking in the beginning, but that blood just needs time for them to pop. So so people will often pass them up, or if you're a breeder that breeds that particular bloodline, then you would need to, as a business model wise, and I've seen what makes, what's the most successful when it comes to things like that, is to sit on the puppies. You know, you have to be willing to sit on them till they're a little bit older, um, three months, uh, four months, five months, maybe even six months. But at that point in time, I mean, I've seen people who, as a puppy, tried to sell the dog, sell the puppy for, uh, you know, anywhere between, you know, I'll just say numbers like, you know, five to 8,000, and they sat on the puppy, let the puppy mature more, and then started selling, you know, them as, you know, mid adults or adults for, you know, 10,000 plus. So it all depends, it all depends on, your business model, and like I said, that, this is what I found that this one particular um, group was doing. I, I've seen other camps do it, but like I said, this one particular group with this one particular blood, their blood takes longer to pop. So with that being said, they were smart about it. They said, you know what? We're not gonna be selling puppies um, because we're gonna get, uh, you know, less for the puppies. We'll wait till they mature. People will see what what they become and, and, we, and we sell them that way. That's a one business model that they've done that works very well for them. Another business model, right? Um, another business model is I've seen camps that, I mean, some of their puppies turn out absolutely phenomenal right out the gate, you know? Um, so what they tend to do is, yet again, they'll, they'll, they'll sell the puppies outright right then and there, you know? Um, so that's another business model, you know, when it comes down to like selling your puppies in your program and things like that, you know? Um, another business model, I mean, what we do here is we have, um, especially now, we have less breedings. Um, and because we have less breedings, our pups become more desirable because of that, you know, um, less puppies to sell. So the value of them goes up, you know, so you can ask more for your puppies because um, especially if you have like, a following and you have people who are, are interested in your particular bloodline or your dogs or whatever the case may be, um, you, you can ask for more because of that, you know, um, especially when you have a really long waiting list and things like that, you know, my waiting list can be, can be up to right now, um, we, we won't have anything available for at least like the next year, you know? So anyway, with that being said, um, you know, that's another business model as well, you know, um, Another business model is is some breeders, um, I'm not crazy about this, but they like to have tons of litters. They'll have tons of litters, sell their puppies for a, a, a lower amount. Um, so it's really more uh, quantity than quality, you know what I'm saying? Um, and they'll just keep pumping out puppies and they just try to sell as many as they can. I'm not a big fan of that business model, but that is another business model, you know, um, that that's in this world. Um, 
Another business model that I see is some some breeders don't even really have litters. Um, they really stick to more just studding their males out, you know, they just stud their males out and that's pretty much it, you know, um, which is, I mean, hey, if you can get enough people to be interested in your stud, which is rather difficult because you first have to start with your own productions to show what the stud can produce. But hey, I mean, if you can get the job done, that's also another great business model and you don't have any, you don't have to deal with whelping puppies, you know, um, but I mean, hey, that's like I said, that's just another that's just another business model as well. So I mean, um, I just wanted to give you guys some 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 ideas and some insight. Like, there's the moral of the story, and 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 I'm just going off the top of my head because I never script these. Is the moral of the story is like when you're as a, when you're a dog breeder, you know, you gotta find what fits your business model as well as as a person. You know what I'm saying, like everybody's different so you got to find your business model that works for you and it may take different tries and different attempts and things like that and see see what works for you you know um but like i said you know don't don't give up don't stop trying you know um and, and find you know the ideal business model that suits your camp you know what i'm saying um that 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 you you know enjoy um partaking in um but yeah, like, like I pretty much said, you know, you just got to find the business model that fits you and, and your style, you know, and in turn, um, business will be a lot better for you. You know, I, I think trying to mimic another person's uh, business model at times, hey, maybe it can work. It might not work. You just got to try different ones out and see what works for you. You know what I'm saying? Because... Um, I see too many breeders that try one specific style of, of uh, 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 one specific um, business model and then they get stuck with a lot of puppies because the, the one business model that a lot of people often just try to mimic is, well, I'm just going to keep producing dogs, um, you know, litter after litter after litter and, and, and in hopes of selling, you know. Um, but that business model may not be the best for you, you know? I don't know. But, um, and and the business model also needs to fit the style of dog that you breed. Meaning, you know, if you don't have a lot of dogs, if you don't have a lot of dogs, you don't have a lot of breedings going on, you know, um, you can try that smaller but more concentrated uh, business model. But just spend, if you only have two breedings a year, spend the rest of the year promoting that you know um and things like that you know spend the rest of the, 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 the you know your time promoting it and see how that works for you but yet again don't be fearful that hey that business model ain't work for me or whatever try a different one then you know that's what i that's what i did when i started and i tried different business models and so it worked for me you know like I said, prime example is like I saw these one guys, you know, they would raise um, their dogs to adulthood and then sell adults instead, you know, who would have thought? I mean, I wouldn't have thought, but at least I didn't think of that in the beginning of the game, you know, so that's why I wanted to make this quick video and, 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 and also, like I said, just understanding that there's different styles of dog. So you need, your business model needs to fit either the type or style of dog that you're producing. You know, um, just something to think about, you know, and, and I'm, I'm all for kind of like thinking outside of the box and, and just trying different things until it works. Cause all it takes is one method for it to work for you very well to be your business model for the rest of your program, for the rest of your life or whatever, you know? So you know, that's just another thing to be mindful of is also the styles of dog and the exotic bully world, not only exotic, but the French, even Frenchies now, they got different styles. Even English Bulldogs, now they have different styles. You, your business model has to fit the type of dog that you're, you're, you're breeding. Like I said, just, just do your homework. And actually, you know what? The best thing I could say, the best thing I could say is look at the, the kennels and camps that maybe you aspire to be in the ranks with. Look at how they conduct business as far as their business model. Don't just watch them, 
watch how they do things you know um watch how they conduct business watch how many litters they have a year things like that and um not only that but what's so great about like instagram and facebook and things like that is now you can actually go back and look at oh how did they do things a year ago how did they do things two years from ago go back on their feed and look you know, even on YouTube, <laughs> you can go back on their YouTube channel and look, you know what I'm saying? And and do your homework and, and see how, look at what their recipe to success was. And it's as simple as that, you know? So, hope this was helpful. Hope it was useful. Um, it sounded pretty helpful and useful in my head. So, <laughs> um, all right, guys, I'll see you guys on the next episode of Breeders Hacks. And uh, if you guys got any other tips and tricks too, whether you want me to check them out or whether you want me to um, do an episode on them, whether uh, whatever the case may be, a topic you want me to touch on, whatever, um, or even just your two cents on the video, please drop a comment down below. So, all right, guys, I got to go. See you guys in the next episode of Breeders Hacks.